Okay, so in this video we're installing a headless Debian server and um, using the latest net install ISO from Debian, placing this into a virtual machine and then connecting to it from the host machine using SSH. So first step in this process is go to your search engine of choice, type Debian and then go to debian.org and then, I don't know what's happening here, it loaded faster earlier. Okay, so you want to go to Getting Debian, and then you want to go for a small installation image, 64 bit PC net install ISO. You just click that, 291 meg, hit save. Now, it should start downloading. It says it's going to be about two minutes. Luckily I already did this, so we don't have to do that again. The next thing you're going to need is a hypervisor. Now you can use VMware. Personally, for home use, I prefer to use uh, VirtualBox. VMware, I find, is more useful in an enterprise environment. Okay. Right, so here is VirtualBox. This is the newest version of VirtualBox for Linux VirtualBox version 6 and all I've done here is you go up here and you click on new okay and this will allow you to create a new virtual machine so I'm just gonna go and find where this windows jumped up VirtualBox VMs create virtual machine okay so this is the screen you see let me just expand that out so we can Okay, right. So, I have a separate drive partition that I can put these on so I, I, I don't fill up my home partition. So, let's give it a sensible name. Debian 9.7 Headless X64. Type Linux and you can see it's already identified. That's Debian. Let's hit next on that. I'm going to be quite generous with this and give it, let's say we'll give it, so the installation is quite quick. We'll give it 3.2 um, gig of RAM. So three, two and a half. Right, create a virtual hard disk. Um, a VDI you want, dynamically allocated. And I'm gonna give this 16 gig for, for setting up web servers and things. You shouldn't need much more than that. However, it is dynamically expanding. So if we need to go further, then we can do that. So. Click on create. And then in your virtual machine, you want to click settings. All right, this will bring up this window. Now, the first thing we want to do is go to storage. And this controller IDE here, that is our virtual CD drive. All right, and down here, that, as you can see, 16 gig actual size, 2 meg, it's tiny, is the disk. So we're just going to choose our ISO. Now the ISO is in the virtual drive. This would be a good time to just go to network as well. Leave it on that just now, but later on when we want to connect to it, we'll probably use our bridged adapter. So hit OK on there. And then all we want to do is just start the virtual machine. OK, so this is the uh, Debian installer here. Choose graphical install. All right. Let me just make this a sensible size so you can see it. So the language is English. Um, I'm gonna choose United Kingdom. Obviously just choose your keyboard language if you wanna install it in some other language. Now, at this point, we have a, uh, because this is the net install ISO, we're not actually, we haven't actually downloaded the operating system. What we've downloaded is the installer effectively and just some basic tools to get us going. What it needs and why it's detecting links here is it needs to connect back to Debian to pull the actual packages for the system. So once the network's configured, that's succeeded, right, host name. Now the host name is the thing that will appear before the at symbol. Um, so I'm just going to call this K 
just leave it as Debian and hit continue. And this is just for testing. You can call it whatever you like, but I would just call it Debian. So domain name, leave that blank. Right, root password. Important that you don't forget this. Enter your root password twice. Hit continue. Full name. There we go. Username. Password for your user. Enter that twice. Hit continue. Now, this is setting up the partitions. Um, maybe just move this up a little bit so we can see. Right. For this example, you want to do guided use entire disk. Hit continue. There's only one disk there, so continue on that. All files in one partition, definitely the best thing to do to get this set up quickly. And then just choose finish partitioning, write changes to disk, click yes to confirm, and now it's formatting the partitions and it will grab the base system. Now this shouldn't take too long. Um, you can see here all the stuff that it's extracting, uh, core packages, so the kind of the next step of the installation will occur after this happens. So I'm going to stop the video just now and then I'll continue when it asks me the next question. Okay, so this part here is um, if you have some drivers on your laptop, you might have them on a CD. I've never done this, so just hit continue on there. Right, for the package manager, you want to select a server that's in your country so we're in the UK here and um, I always just choose this one however when this one hasn't worked this one usually works um, but I've only seen it, it not work once or twice so leave the proxy blank and then it should be on to configuring app now this wasn't too long last time but again I'll, I'll just pause this for the sake of um, not making this too boring. Okay, so this part, the package user survey, I'm just going to say no to that. Uh, the popularity contest. Right. Now, this is quite an important bit. The Debian desktop environment. In Linux, there are multiple different desktop environments. So you can think of these as your, your user interface, your graphical user interface. Um, for example, this computer I'm running and on my laptop, I use the GNOME or GNOME desktop environment. KDE is also very popular. That's written in a language called Qt. Qt. Cinnamon is slightly newer than GNOME and KDE, as is Mate and LXDE and XFCE are lightweight desktop environments. So if you were running this perhaps on an old laptop, one of these would be better to go with. Um, but in this case, we don't want a desktop environment at all. We don't want a print server either. We're not going to be doing any printing. All we want is standard system utilities and SSH. So just hit continue on that. And you'll find that if you go for a desktop environment, this number here will be more like a thousand. It'll be much bigger and it'll take a lot longer. If you just grab the standard system utilities and an SSH server, you should find that the installation doesn't take long at all. As you can see, it's it's retrieved all the files it needs now, um, and all it's doing now is just compiling the system, unpacking and compiling. So again, I'll stop here and we'll, we'll continue when this is finished. Okay, so the last part is installing the grub bootloader to the master boot record yes we want to do that then you just select our hard drive and it installs the bootloader and really i've only been stopping for a couple of minutes each time at the most and um, this is taking no time at all and there you go that's the installation complete now if we hit continue here don't worry about removing the installation medium we're back to there we go, just hit return there. And any second now, after it's done, sort of. There we go, 
that's it. So I should be able to log in. Let's just click over here. There we go. And if we do df minus k h space dot, you'll see we've used about we've used like a, a couple of gig there. We've used eight eight five four. Um, 7% of our, of our drive used, and if we do that to show the memory, we've got our three gig there. So that's it, that's how to install. Now, something that's important, um, I'm gonna show you how to, uh, with guest editions and things, you can enable bi-directional copy and paste, but since this is a headless server, th there's probably little point in us having the virtual machine open all the time. So what to do, is we run we've got it on NAT at the moment and if we run IP space A we can see um, let me just move this up right down so that adapter 1 is the loopback ad adapter adapter 2 this ENP 0S3 is our sort of virtual Ethernet adapter and the INET address of that is 1002.15 and that's because we've got the settings on NAT at the moment. So what we're going to do is head over to the VirtualBox Manager. Let me just tidy this up a bit. There we go. Like that. Go to your virtual machine and close it down. So just stop the VM power off the machine, don't save the machine state. Now we're going to go into settings and we'll just make this come up at the moment. Virtual box settings. Let's see which one this is. Yep. Okay. Here's our settings here. And we're going to go to network and I'm going to change this to a bridged adapter. EN01. So that's my host machine's adapter. We want to bridge that with the we'll go to advanced and just allow it all on there hit ok now we're going to start the a normal start this time and let's just get back to virtual box ok so let's hit ok there hopefully this should be booted up in a second zoom this in so you can see right here we are back at the top so now we do log in with my username and password and if I do IP space A and let's just move this up a little bit so you can see now you can see I've got a more sensible looking IP 192.168.100.82 so this time click on the X in the top corner to close the virtual machine or you can go to file um, and hit close. Now, choose save the machine state and hit OK. Right. I'm going to bring up VirtualBox Manager now. VirtualBox Manager. Now this time, you right click on this, start, headless start. Okay? And that's it started, but it hasn't actually opened the system. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the terminal on the host machine. Now if you were running Windows or, or using a Mac you could install PuTTY or Mobile Xterm or a similar um, terminal emulator so you can SSH the machine. In Linux um, we have the terminal, we have the GNOME terminal open all the time anyway so we, generally we you know, we don't mind SSH and things. Right, so here I am on the host machine, and I'm just going to SSH to 192.168.100.82. Um, and specify the username. Okay. Type yes to accept. Pop the password in. Great. Now we're logged in to our virtual machine. And if we do 3 minus M, we'll see it's got the 3 gig of RAM that we set earlier. D 
here, minus kh, this dot. Oh, you can see that we're using about 8%. Where it said 7 before, and maybe something's changed. But the, the RAM and the, the file systems are completely different to, to my local machine. So now, from web browsers, documents, and things, I can copy and paste right into the machine, and it's running in the background.